In this video, I'm going to share with you guys my top street food spots in Kamakura. So we've actually been here before. I did a top 10 things to do for this area. If you're looking for something to do, then definitely check out this video. But in this video, we're gonna be more focusing on the street food spots in this area. What's also nice about Kamakura is that it's about an hour away from Shinjuku and Shibuya area. So if you're trying to get a little bit out of Tokyo and you wanna just like get into a more historical place and see the shrines and the temples, and if you wanna have some good street food, then this is a perfect spot. So this street I'm taking you on today is called Komachidori, which runs parallel parallel to Kamakura's main street, Wakamiya Oji. Komachi Street is a long straight shopping street with about 250 shops and within it a variety of can't miss food spots, making this area a street food lover's paradise. And as always, don't forget to check out my Instagram stories to see other foods that don't show up in these street food videos. Alright, let's get our food on! Number 7, Una Tama at Hanari Inari. She's just so nice. Alright, so this place is known for its inari, but today I want to do something a little bit different. They have a tamago yaki, and inside they have unagi which is eel. Look at that, it's an eel built into the actual egg. All right, let's take the first bite. Ho ho ho. The heaven, the heavens have just parted. The egg itself, you notice that they've like put some dashi in it. They give it some savoriness, but there's also a sweetness to it. But the unagi, the eel, the flavors just burst. It has a lot of like texture. As you can see the skin right there, it has it like that slimy, crunchy feel to the unagi, but then it has almost the umami flavors that only the eel can actually produce. And it just goes so well with a tamagoyaki. This is a pretty common Japanese dish, but you just don't see it in a lot of street food places. At least I haven't in my experience in Japan. So if you're looking for this, then definitely this is the spot. Well, there's like two layers of unagi. That's oh, impressive. Thank you, Mas. Mm. I really like the skin. It's like really crunchy. It's good. The meat itself is fluffy. It really goes well together. Number six, Kamaboko at Asahina. <laughs> So this spot is known for fish cakes and I've got my fish cake lollipop. So this is like one of the more famous places here just because it's the first one on the street. This one has taco in it and taco is octopus in Japanese. Let me just open that up for you guys. Oh. Look, you can see all of the different like pieces. Even some taco and it almost looks like a ginger in there. And then it has like some onions. You can see all the oils on my fingers. Let's have a bite of this loveliness. Mmm! Definitely can taste the octopus in there. And it's kind of like a, a mushy kind of uh, texture. It looks almost crunchy on the outer shell, but it's not really crunchy. It's kind of like a, a mushiness inside of all like the fish cake. The octopus itself has kind of like a, a chewy taste as well. And you can taste the ginger too. You can taste that it's been seasoned quite well. It's not just like a bland taste. There's a lot of flavor. If you were drinking, this is a perfect drinking snack. Number five, grilled squid at Kamakura Wasen. This spot offers fresh fish bowls, and in the front of the shop, you'll find an assortment of street food pickups, but I recommend throwing down on the barbecue. I love how they grill the food on the spot right after you order it, and the barbecue smell is so intoxicating. Oh, look at, oh, look at, wow. That was a lot of juice that just came out. I think I got some on my shoe. I got squid juice on my shoe, guys. Look at that, a full freaking squid. All right, let's take a bite. Mmm. That's good. Nicely marinated. It's kind of like a, like a sweet marinated barbecue squid. The inside is still nice and moist, and it has like a nice chewy texture to it. Oh, that's great. Mmm. Oh. 
That's so delicious. All right, so you can see like the, the inside of the squid has kind of like a nice, smooth, silky texture inside. This area is actually known for its seafood. There's a lot of like fresh seafood in this area because it's right by the ocean. Another reason why I love this area. Number four, udon and tempura at Miyoshi. Miyoshi is a kamaage udon shop that is fairly new to the game, but already on the Michelin Bib Gourmand Guide, Yokohama Special Edition 2015. The shop only offers counter seats that let you take in the full experience of the chefs cooking tempura and noodles to perfection. If you get the right seat, you can even see them making the noodles in the back kitchen. Kamaage udon are udon noodles boiled in a big vat that are served hot or cold and dipped into a soup or sauce, and the noodles are plump and have a bouncy play with each bite. Look at all this tempura. We have some green beans here, chicken breast tempura. I'm just dipping that chicken in some salt just to pull the flavors out of the tempura. Mm, that's so good. The chicken breast is still nice and moist. Oh, you guys know I love fried chicken, but like tempura fried chicken is just another lovely way to eat chicken. What I love about this place is that they fry everything just when you order it, so everything is still hot. Hot. Oh, and it's just so crispy. What I also like is that they give you a set of ingredients. So you have like green onions, tempura crisps, red pepper, and also has some like horseradish. And you can like put it in with your udon to give it like an extra kick to taste. And I got the chirashi bowl. Kamakura is known to have these like chirashi. Oh. I love the green onions. Gives it like a nice fresh spring taste. The fish itself just gives it like a nice savory taste that mixes well with the rice. So there's some bonita flakes in there too. That gives it another meld of interesting quick combination of flavors. Mm. I was so into the tempura I forgot to talk more about the udon. Anyways, as you can see, it's amazing. And Michael ordered a cold udon with a light refreshing sesame dipping sauce. All right, so we've been to a few places now, but I wanted to take this time out to thank our sponsor, Voice Translator Alive. Without them, we wouldn't be able to film all these videos and go to all these cool spots. Voice Translator Alive is a great app to help you in foreign countries when you don't know the language, and it has a lot of cool features. It's cool because it uses translation engines from Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Udao, and Baidu. With a combination of five translation engines, you know you're always gonna get the most accurate and best translation available all over the world. What's also nice about the is it has an upside down mode. Your speaker and your microphone are usually at the bottom of your phone so you can speak into it and you can listen to it just like this. And what I also like about this is it has multi-tool integration. If you look in the app itself you can find photo, browser, maps, and calculator functions so that you can use this app while using those apps at the same time making it so convenient. I'll leave a link in the description so you guys can go download it for yourself onto your phones. It's free so definitely check it out. All right, so let's go to the next spot. Number three, cheese tart at Hachi. <laughs> so I got this cheese bomb. Let me just break it open for you guys. So this is like a bamkuhen, which is kind of like bread that they've made on a kind of dowel and then they just like roll the layers of cake on it and then like they just like slowly cooks. You can see they have like the, the layers right there and they have like the cheese custard in the middle. Let me just open this up for you guys. Ooh, what a cheesy custard surprise. It has like a really dense creamy texture inside and it's almost like very eggy and it's quite sticky. This outside the bump one is really nice and crunchy. It's like a perfect texture that like goes around. It's like almost having a nice like crispy bread pastry on the inside and like a soft creamy inside. Man, it's so crumbly. Number two, fish and chips at Saami. Saami used to be a restaurant for Shojin Ryori, which is a vegetarian cuisine based on Buddhist monk diet restrictions. But recently it's been renewed and reborn as a seafood restaurant. But FYI for my vegetarian fans, they do still carry their silky goma tofu dish from their previous restaurant. However, I love my fried foods and at the entrance of this shop, fortunately for me, they offer takeout Japanese style fish and chips using only fresh catch of the day fish. Put some mayonnaise. 
All right, so what's awesome about this shop that we just went to, they have different fish every day. Whatever fish is like that, that they've caught or not caught, whatever fish they have in the shop, that's what they fry that day. And today they have Goma Saba and Suzuki. All right, let's just dip this in. Look at that loveliness. Oh, that fish is tender. Look at the moisture just on there. And I love how like it's been fried, like it's really crispy. It's almost like a, a tempura style like fry. The fried flakes on it, the skin, surprisingly light. Like sometimes you get fried fish and it's really like thick and crispy. I actually like that. But this one is nice and light. Mm -hmm. They haven't over seasoned it. That's why you probably want a little bit like of ketchup on it. And the fish is just ultra fresh. That's good. Now put it the moiso. It's so soft. Oh, it's like it just it breaks down. As I just use this my fork. Mm. <laughs> the one I ate is gomasaba. So moist, and I can taste that the characteristic gomasaba flavor. Oh, that is so good. People is missing out on this. Oh my god, it's so good. That's just, <laughs> there's just so many potatoes here. Mm. Oh wow, the potatoes are good too. And number one, Nikumaki Onigiri at Kamakura Ichibanya. This shop is known for their croissant taiyaki, but today we're going down a path more suited for my liking, and I'm gonna show you their indulgent melted cheese beef nikumaki. After you place your order, they put Korean spicy miso on top of the nikumaki onigiri and pour melted cheese over it, then flame kiss it with a torch. It's still hot to the touch. This shop that we got this melted cheese meat rice bowl. Actually, it's kind of famous for having taiyaki with chirasu, but Michael doesn't like the chirasu inside of the taiyaki. She doesn't like the combination, so instead, we're going with this lovely melted cheese surprise. It was awesome. You just like put the cheese on top of the rice bowl, and I think you can see that he just put some like miso sauce on there. Yeah, it's quite spicy. It's like, uh, it's kochujan. Mmm! That's good! Alright, so let's have a bite here. Ho oh, ho! Sing to me, cheese ball! Sing to me! That's so nice! That's so much flavor! The meat itself, it's almost like a prosciutto, but it's probably not. Oh, it's roast. It's almost like they've cooked so much that it's kind of almost crispy. And then the rice itself, it looks like it's um, been marinated. It's just like the perfect rice ball. This, this could be my favorite onigiri ever. It just has uh, so much um, drunkiness. <laughs> it's just a gut bomb and it probably like a heavy loveliness is coating my stomach right now. Has some spiciness, has some umami, has melted cheese. What more could you ask for? It's a lot bigger than I thought. Mm. I think it's my favorite. Huh. I think I'd rather eat it without the cheese. Because like I'm eating it this part, it's like extremely good. Mm. See how the meat juice? See, it's like brown around this area. It's just so good. Filled with umami. Alright, so that concludes the video. If you liked it, help me out and hit that like button. If you want to see more what I'm doing throughout the day or what I'm doing during these video shoots, then check out my Instagram account. And if you want to see more of my guides in Tokyo or in Japan, hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.